Okay. Good morning, everyone. I want to welcome all of you, grade 12 students, parents, uh, visitors to the math exhibition for the academic year 2020-2021. In the past days, all the groups showed good work. They sent the first draft of work we modified, and they sent modified one, and so on. This process continued till we reached the final preview and the final project we will play today. As I was satisfied with most of the work, and remember, there is always a space to improve. This can be improved in any work you can do in the future. As all of you know that things this year were unusual for students and for teachers. This makes things harder, but at the same time, learning cycle will never stop and always be continued. And we could reach positive ends. Remember and always be sure that learning is very important and you are learning in each step, not only you, all of us who are learning in each step we do. I want to say thank you all seniors for all the work you did during preparing for this project as well as for the whole academic year and wish you continue full of energy and power in your uh, future. Now we will start our exhibition uh, with a short video from Dr. Nigat, our math department, HOD, the head of the assessment and an SLT member. Good morning. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Dear students, teacher, SLTs, principal, HODs. Good morning. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Dear students, teacher, SLTs, principal, HODs, and parents. Welcome to Virtual Math Exhibition 2021. The goal of NAR's math department is not to increase the amount of knowledge, but to create the possibilities mm -hmm. for a child to invent and discover to create men and women who are capable of doing new things. Education is not the learning of facts, but the training of mind to think. Children must be taught how to think, not what to think. This event provides the students the opportunity to showcase their creative abilities while reflecting the skills they learn during their math lessons. Good luck, students. So now we will start displaying the projects. We will have four projects. This means we will have or we will see four videos. Let's all of us watch, enjoy, and learn at the same time. So video number one.
welcome everyone uh, to this uh, to the math uh, project that we decided for the math fair. Uh, that's done by uh, grade 12, which, which is uh, our subject, uh, our project name is Math Clock. Next. First of all, we'll talk about history of the topic. The, the topic that we chose is derivatives. And uh, all of us know that Isaac Newton uh, invented derivatives. We studied derivatives with, derivatives with Mr. Amran, and it is such an uh, entertainment subject and uh, new for us as grade 12 students. Real life application. Now, uh... It was uh, important for our project that we need to include uh, real-life applications. So the first one, the most easiest one, is that uh, we can, we use derivatives to calculate the profits and loss in business trading. And we can also use derivatives in real life to check the temperature of weather or uh, for a human being. Uh, and the third thing is that we use derivatives to determine the speed or the distance uh, covered, such as the miles per hour or kilometers per hour. We use derivatives to decide to find these ones. We also use derivatives to derive many equations in physics. Next. We use the project, uh, like we integrate the project with many other subjects. And some of, uh, one of these subjects is physics. Uh, derivative, uh, derivative is uh, the rate of change with geometry. Uh, it is used like uh, derivative is used the rate of change of position. So mathematically, velocity is a derivative of position. Net force is the rate of change of momentum. So the derivative of an object momentum tells you the net force of, of an object. So we decided to use this uh, project for, uh, for, for uh, uh, this is the project that we, we, we thought about doing it uh, as, a, as an entertainment plus with those participants, other participants who participate in this, uh, in this uh, okay. 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 Yeah. Other participants can uh, benefit or gain knowledge through the, this, entertain, this entertainment that we decided to do, which is a model of a clock, where we uh, design, where we added some of the equations, general equations, and uh, some of the derivative equations. If if not, we can give you some hints so you could you could uh, understand or try to solve the equation much better. Just, uh, I just wanted to uh, to include this that uh, Mr. Amran is not allowed to participate in this uh, 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 in this project that we did, but he can be used as a lifeline. So if, if anyone else who wants to participate, he can be as a lifeline or a or a person who can help the participants to find or get to the solution that we. Uh, uh, of course, we will explain the lesson for uh, any participants and uh, we'll give them hints so they can solve the questions that is on the math clock. And now let's go to the next slide and tell you about our difficulties and what we learn from this math clock or our math fair. Yes. I am Ahmed Hassan. I had difficulties because it took us a lot of time and uh, we have confused at some ideas. And what I learned is uh, teamwork that we, uh, we were together and if uh, I get stuck in anything, uh, Muhammad Ashraf or Haytham or Noor come to help me. And there is a new thing that I learned from this project that uh, like it's uh, the first time for me to use such an idea as this and uh, it is so exciting to use the new idea okay 
so I am Ahmed Esraf and my reflection about the project. Difficulties, the difficulties I I faced some difficulties in finding the materials of the project and uh, reaching to the project we needed because we were having like a lot of ideas in our mind and we don't we like we were confused we were confused or we were stuck which idea will be the better idea. What I've learned, I've learned that teamwork makes things easier because, uh, of course, if I'm, I work in the project myself, I couldn't reach to this level. So thanks to my partners, Noor, uh, Ahmed, and Aitam, they made think, things like more easier. Something new, it was uh, a, a new experience and uh, uh, we were, uh, we like, uh, gathered together so and work together and it's a new idea for me and for all of us so it was interesting actually yes uh hi my name is Haytham Haytham Baruch and uh, the difficulties that I have faced is that uh, it, it took us uh, much time to finish the project uh, since we were uh, clueless of what to what to do we, we had we had like we had we didn't have that much ideas so thankfully when we found out an ideas to, uh, uh, before that it took us so much time to finish the actual model it also like when we found the idea it took us much time to finish the model so I hope you appreciate that and uh, what what I learned what I got to learn is that teamwork makes even the hardest projects feel the easiest. So if I got to do this project by myself, as Mohammed Ashraf said, it would be very hard for me. It took him took him a lot of time, a lot of time. So thanks to that, to, to, the, to our uh, classmates, to my classmates, Mohammed Ashraf and everyone, uh, it took much, much uh, easier and it took us really a short time to finish the project and the model. What I've learned that uh, the, I, the, that idea that we actually thought it became true. Like the idea, the idea, the idea is just a thought. So that thinking turned into a real model is something very exciting and very very new, and and it helped me realize that I can turn my ideas into a real thing or my thoughts into a real model or a or a thing. So yeah, thanks. Uh, okay, and now is my reflection. My name is Noor Bassam, and uh, the difficulties that I faced at that, it took me a lot, you know, like a lot of effort uh, to help my uh, teammates of the project. You know, I bought some tools, some materials for the project. The hard part was uh, reaching uh, to, the, to where we decided because uh, there was a lot of traffic. Uh, and what I learned uh, from this project is that, um, as as everyone will like, uh, when we work as team, uh, we can make the hardest thing, uh, even the impossible things, to make them possible because um, it makes uh, like, as everyone said, uh, it makes us to reach our dreams and. The work gets more easier and divided. Um, I also learned more stuff about the derivatives that how it's related to physics and real life situations and um, you know like investing and etc. Now there's something new that I learned today that it was first um, it was a really uh, unique and a good experience for me to go out and work. It made me you know like work with my teammates uh, it made me like I have, um, it made me feel like I had the responsibility to do something. And I really like to work on new things, uh, especially when it comes to projects. Uh, and yeah, that's my reflection. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you for
I want to ask the leader of the students of the C group to give us one more reflection and feedback about the whole group. Uh, good morning, everyone. My uh, name is Haytham Tarak from Grade 12A. And I want to thank you for uh, to give me the lead to say the reflection. I think uh, there was there was a challenge there was a challenge among all seniors to uh, for for the project to be n number one. So this gave us more power to complete a great work. And uh, there was a competition among all senior seniors. I bet. Uh, for the for competing for uh, first place, it was an interesting project, and uh, we had some of entertainment and mixed with learning and recognizing our own potential potential, and also discovering, designing, you know, and creating as well. Moreover, this work gave us the opportunity to have some independent learning based on researches and sharing information with one another and uh, discovering, of course. I also want to thank my group because uh, they re the, and everyone, I, I bet, because I, I realized that teamwork can reduce any obstacles. And this is what we did. We applied many different skills in this exhibition, mainly teamwork and self-dependence. It also gave gives the students in my uh, in my point of view it also gives the students the courage to search for new topic independently in this project we faced some obstacles of course that were showing down on our work slowing down on our work uh, one of the main obstacles I would say is that uh, we faced was choosing the topic that was really a challenge for us as we wanted to go very far with the with the topic and information and integrations of course so uh, we were fearing that uh, like to stop the middle of the journey and waste time but uh, hopefully and thankfully we could complete with the help of uh, my group and uh, hope we could have more time to extend more applications and create an effective model. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Aysam and the whole group. Now we can move to project number two and video number two. So the concept of the game is a poster with 25 boxes will be displayed and those 25 boxes will be randomly numbered. To start the game, the two players should choose any number. In order for them to win, they should form a line of five with the boxes. Each number holds a derivative equation and they should solve it. If the equation is solved, that player will gain a point and the box with the number that he chose will be colored by his color. The first player that forms a line of five with those boxes will win. However, there is a challenge question in the middle of the board, and both of the players will have to encounter this question. So basically, it's a more advanced and more challenging game of bingo. We have chosen this topic since it reflects on our grade 12 curriculum and our study of derivative that we have learned from our beloved teacher. We have created a game that includes bingo and derivative. It is a fun competitive game. This is our topic for our math fair. Now moving on to Muhammad Khalid to explain the history of derivative. 
calculus is a mathematical discipline focused on limits, quantity, derivatives, integral, and infinite series. Isaac Newton and Leibniz independently developed the theory of calculus in the later 17th century. Also, the derivative uh, in, it helps uh, really much in real life. It helps very much that uh, people now are using it uh, in in every building and even in electron device. They need it. They need to do exactly the same. And now uh, they um, they make uh, a a bingo derivative that uh, again it's a game that helps people to memorize how. Uh, how um, they, they can do better than uh, they can do Each one of us worked as a team and found six different unique derivatives question to fill out the bingo board and also I represent the history of the topic and I went to school to work out with my teammate to do the poster about uh, about about bingo derivative and this is my contrib contribution each one of us worked as a team and found six different unique derivative questions to fill out the bingo board containing 25 questions in total and also I represented the idea in our video. Also we met up in the school to prepare our poster by making the bingo table make and making it more presentable and enjoyable. This is my contribution for our math fair project. Thank you. All of us took an important part in the project. For example, all of us had to find and solve six questions of derivative. I did that. And I helped to shape the idea of the project and the whole concept. And I discussed the group about some ideas that helped the game to be as unique and different as possible. I edited some of the videos too that were needed for the project. I also talked about the concept of the game and how everything works and what will happen if there is a draw and everything. We came up with this idea all together so the game won't be as confusing for the players. So basically, all the work that has been needed from the group for the project was distributed equally and fairly between us. All of us work very hard in the project and uh, the project is uh, really connected uh, to the real life, it uh, connects by uh, by the building structure and by how people uh, can move freely in the world. Uh, then other countries, when when you see it, they are uh, they are uh, hard to move around, but in UAE it's very easy to move around because they use the relative. They uh, they see how how fairly people can move and how cars can move and how the structure will be and how it can affect people. And they see even the disadvantage and the advantage uh, of the derivative uh, of the building. At the first of the project, uh, we uh, 
find really hard uh, to find uh, how to edit the, uh, each of uh, each of the tasks that uh, we are given. So we make it uh, so we make it in our way. We, uh, we cut the parts that the easy for us to do, and and we do it. And the hard one we do it all together. This is how uh, we, this is how we, we did the project. It's a little work and uh, uh, it, it, it's the ending that turn it uh, very well. We make it even faster uh, than before. We faced m major difficulties since the COVID situation. We couldn't meet and work to face and to face with some of the members, but we learned few things which are time management and working in a respectful co cooperative manner. This is what I have learned and what the difficult that I have faced. We faced major difficulties since the COVID situation. We couldn't meet up and work face to face with some of the group members. But we learned few things from this event, which are time management and working in a respectful cooperative manner and working virtually. This, this is what I have learned and what the difficulties that I have faced. Hope you enjoy and thank you. We did face some major difficulties and drawbacks, such as not being able to meet and not being able to work together face to face. However, we did manage to go through them. We hosted virtual meetings and we talked about the project and that really helped us gain the experience to learn about man time management and working virtually and all that. Oh, please, the leader of the group, can you give us one more feedback about the work of the project since the beginning until the end? Dear all, I want to thank I want to thank everyone in the school to give us an opportunity to have a math exhibition day and give us the chance to to display what we can do for sure while preparing the project and and in each phase we were learning something new in our project we could connect the concept of derivatives with fun enter entertainment and knowledge teamwork was our success to achieve all the objectives we we settled down at the beginning one of the most important things while doing the project is the independent learning each of us could learn something new while completing the corresponding part Thanks again to everyone watching our video. Thanks, Mr. Amran, to our guide, support, and instructions. Thanks, Mathematics Department, for this day. Thank you all. Thank you, Muhammad, Farid, and the whole group. Now we can move to video number three and the project number three for distance learning students. Today we'll talk about our uh, virtual virtual math exhibition, Grade 12, DL students, Ahmed Salem and Aydar Wish and Ahmed Mahdi. Uh, we will speak about the Ferris wheels uh, and uh, how does it work and uh, what is uh, the, what is a Ferris wheel and we'll we'll just uh, give how uh, the Ferris wheel is connected to math. And what are the and types we chose, of uh, And we chose this topic because we were fascinated of, on how the first wheel is working because it's a big structure and it's uh, as if it's defying gravity. And this is why we chose the first wheel topic. Now we'll start. What is, a, uh, what is the first wheel? A first wheel, also known as a big wheel in the United Kingdom, and, and is an amusement ride that consists of a, a revolving upright wheel with several passenger carrying. 
components also known as passenger cars, uh, cabins, tubes uh, attached to the rim in such a way with uh, they that they remain upright as the wheel spins. Normally due to gravity, cars uh, that are gravity operated in the traditional sense, cars are mounted on the outside of, the, of some of the largest modern first wheels with the electric motor uh, rotating each car independently to hold it upright. These, uh, these wheels are also known as obs observation wheels. Are uh, Their vehicles uh, are known as capsules. The, this alter alternate name uh, on, the, on the other hand are also used for wheels with. Some uh, uh, some facts about the Ferris wheels. Uh, the typical Ferris wheel costs uh, seven uh, seven hundred fifty thousand to build. Uh, there were thirty six cars on the wheel, each with uh, forty to sixty passengers. Ferris wanted to complete with the Eiffel Tower, uh, with the Eiffel Tower, which was designed as the entrance arc uh, to the. 1889 World Fair in uh, Paris. It was estimated that uh, 1.5 million people rode uh, the first Ferris wheel by the end of the fair. I'll speak about uh, how does the Ferris wheel work. Okay, the first to begin, you should be aware that the Ferris wheel rides are massive non-building structures that revolves around a central, a central axis. Ferris wheel seats, also known as a Ferris wheel gondolas, are fixed to the outer rim of Ferris wheel rides and uh, are hung downward in the majority of cases. Uh, since the Ferris wheel seats freely rotate the support where uh, the, uh, the support where they are attached to the Ferris wheel rides as uh, the Ferris wheel rotates, this is the case which uh, the aid of gears and engines the Ferris wheel will rotate upwards but gravity will drag the first wheel back down. The cycle then repeats for the length of the ride and uh, a first wheel can uh, rotate clockwise or counterclockwise. And the standard first wheel has a radius of 20 meters and rotates uh, at uh, 2.5 revolutions per minute or 12 seconds. The first wheel's bottom is uh, 12 meter above the earth. Assume you've arrived at the bottom. This is how a first wheel normally works. When you are at the top, you feel lighter, and uh, when you are when you are at the bottom, you feel heavier. Centripetal acceleration is uh, the source of this. Elements and materials of a Ferris wheel. Uh, okay, because of the unusual configuration of uh, a wheel, right? The man manufacturing fabric uh, fabric uh, of uh, the fabricates the majority of the component parts. Steel is most widely used raw mat uh, raw material for trailer chases. A chassis, wheel support towers, wheel spoke, and uh, wheel cross uh, cross members. Depending on the application, a number of structural steel forms are used: square uh, tubing, circular tubing, angles, uh, channels, and uh, wide uh, flanked beams are among them. Okay, so, okay. So uh, here you can find the, the drive ram spoke. One out of sixteen are here. Okay, l l lateral uh, lateral support in the arm. Okay, um, vertical support, the posts, and uh, the trailer chases the uh, base. Okay, so Ahmed Salem now will start his part of the largest and most expensive uh, wheel in the world. Largest and the most expensive first wheel at Dubai Eye will be the, uh, cent uh, the center centerpiece of the new 6 billion drums Blue Water uh, Island. Project of the cost of Jebra. The biggest first wheel in the world will be able to hold up to 1,400 visitors at any one time. It will stand at a height of 210 uh, meters and a diameter of 250 meters. The eye will take to 48 minutes to rotate every time. The project was being built uh, and entirely on a reclaimed land and once corona virus finished hopes to attract around 3 million tourists per year here and here you have the 3d model of the 
فيرز ويل احمد سالم ميد ذا ثري دي مودل ماتيريالز ذات ذا يوز درايف ريم اند ذا سبوك اند ذا ويل اوف سبورت اون ون ايت سايد اند ذا اكزيت ستيرز ار ان سايد اور جروب كرييتد ذا مودل فور ذا فيرست ويل وي ديسايدد تو كرييت ا مودل تو جيت ا فرذر نوتس اباوت ذا فيرست ويل اند وي يوز سمبل ماتيريالز ساتش از ميني موتورز cardboard and uh, popsicle sticks also I had made an uh, animation a nice animation uh, demonstrating how this clockwise ferris wheel moves free body diagram notice that there is uh, only two uh, forces at, uh, at acting on the human the red circle at the top uh, there is the gravitational force pulling down and the st- uh, at the seat the normal force pushing up there is two forces do not have equal magnitude because the human is not uh, in equilibrium but instead ac- accelerating by moving by moving in a circle the direction of the acceleration and the uh, instant in, uh, is a down a downward toward the central of the, the center of the circle. the types of fair wheels Obser- observation wheel what is observ- observation wheel the observation wheel is one of the most common forms uh, of first wheel right this type of first wheel is usually built for riders to enjoy views of the surroundings and the couples travel slowly to the top of the ride where they pause for a short time before returning to the starting point this wheel uh, as the uh, name suggests Double Ferris wheels and triple Ferris wheels have several col- columns, each supporting a Ferris wheel. A double Ferris wheel, for example, will have two separate Ferris wheels operating at the same time, while a triple Ferris wheel will have uh, three separ- separate wheels operating at the same time. These Ferris wheels come in a vari- variety of speeds and can be used uh, in a variety of amusement parks. Eccentric. Ferris wheel and these wheels differ different from the other types that were previously mentioned because the cars that the passengers sit are not fixed directly to the wheels. Rim is nertic wheels are often called sliding wheels or coasters and the cars slide on rails that are located between the rim and the hub while the wheel is in operation how math is connected to a first wheel. Of course, math is, uh, has played an important role in the construction of first wheels because it ensures that the engineer uh, make no mistakes. First wheels use math to determine dim- dimensions and construct them. In reality, if you want to build a parabolic curve, you'll need, uh, you'll need a ready-made math equation. First wheel uh, application of trigonometric, trigonometric. Fun- functions uh, one of the most common applications of uh, tri- trigonometric functions is Ferris wheel, since the up and down of a rider follows the shape of a sa- of sine and cosine graph. Uh, the equation used is uh, y equal a sine uh, parenthesis b times uh, x minus c close parenthesis plus uh, d. The Ferris wheel dimensions. Okay, here's a question. Uh, this figure is a model of first wheel. Suppose that the diameter, uh, the diameter is uh, 16. Find the distance traveled by a rider if uh, the, the theta is 20. Okay, so the diameter, uh, we, as we said, is 16. So if we, ne- we need to find the, um, the radius to make the form, to, to find the arc length. So, uh, so 16 divided by two is uh, eight. So eight is the radius. The arc length uh, formula is S R theta. So S times, uh, so 8 is the radius times theta 20 equal uh, 160. So we need to convert, if we, we need to convert it from 160 degree to radian. So uh, we, we use to, uh, we use the formula. Uh, so 160 times pi over 180 and the final answer will be 2.79 and uh, this is the uh, the distance traveled by the rider if 
the 20 was the angle. Uh, suppose that uh, the trip for every person is four laps in the first wheel. How many seconds does it take for every lap? First, uh, you will have, uh, as we know from, uh, from the dimensions, it, it's six degree. It's six degree and it takes one second. Equal six uh, divided by uh, six over one equals 360 uh, angle of uh, degrees over X because we don't know the amount of seconds per lap. So first we'll, uh, after we divide and we do cross multiply, we'll find out that uh, X is equal to 60 seconds or one minute for every lap. Then you multiply it by four to know uh, each lap, how much is each lap. It will be 60 times four that the total uh, trip is uh, four minutes. Okay, so uh, me, Ahmed Mahdi and uh, Ahmed Salem would like to thank you so much for listening and uh, and waiting till we finish uh, the PowerPoint slide and our uh, our math fair project. And now we'll uh, oh. speak about uh, the and now we'll speak about the reflection and how we find the, the lesson. So Ahmed Mahdi will start. Okay, first I found some difficulties in choosing the lesson uh, idea because we had a wide variety. Then we started uh, learning about uh, first wheel and we wanted to do a math project about it. Uh, then something new I learned is the history and how is the for, uh, first wheel functioning. And now we'll go to Ali Ahmed. Uh, something new, uh, some difficulties I found is uh, when we created the the um, the, f uh, the first wheel of um, the real prototype. The, uh, prototype, the real project. Okay, so I found a d difficulty in in uh, how to, how in creating it. And also, I found some difficulty is in uh, I found some difficulties in understanding the um, the the formulas and the, um, on how to convert radian on the how how, uh, how to uh, on the the formulas of the first wheel. And uh, the uh, the things I found easy is uh, is uh, researching about uh, like uh, the how does the first wheel works and the elements of the first wheel. And uh, now uh, my friend Ahmed Salem will uh, continue. I found uh, some difficulties in the math problems, but after my friends Ali and Ahmed explained, it became easy and I recalled all the degree lessons from two years back. And, uh, and I learned something new is how the first wheel work. And that is my reflection. And thank you so much for listening to us. Watching. Thank you. Uh, I want to ask for one more uh, feedback from Ali Ahmed representing uh, the reflection. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's, uh, Ali Ahmed, uh, uh, the group leader of the digital learning. Okay, as of as all of us uh, in the group are interested in engineering, uh, this challenged us to choose uh, this topic actually uh, due to its importance and uh, in terms of physics and mathematics. Uh, we learned as a group uh, since the beginning, uh, and we divided the duties till the end. It was a journey actually. We discovered and learned a lot of things. Uh, like, for example, the time management, teamwork, uh, concepts of uh, trigonometry in the in the first wheel in the first wheel uh, topic, and uh, real life applications, daily uh, daily life of uh, how how we can use the and how how the first wheel attracts uh, attracts uh, tourists and many other things the history. And also, uh, we could uh, we could improve our work if we if we were uh, in contact with uh, engineers or with each other actually uh, to connect our skills. We faced the difficulty only in the in gathering and uh, the and meeting each other. Other other uh, other stuff and everything was great actually. And uh, thank you for uh, listening. Thank you, Ali, and the whole group. We still have one more project, project number four.
Here is my reflection. Why we choose conversion between the top of the example. Why we chose logarithm as, as our topic? Uh, one of the main reasons we chose logarithm as our topic uh, was because of, you know, we heard of it in chemistry. The, so we were doing the pH scale and everything and uh, Ms. Marwa brought it up. Uh, logarithms uh, was a part of uh, determining the pH scale level. So uh, we heard of it that time and when Mr. Umran said that uh, we have a math project and uh, we have to choose a math lesson. Uh, so all of us we decided that we had to choose logarithms because we already had a real life integration with it uh, So I thought we would it, it would be uh, Easier, you know easier approach because we already had a real life integration and then collectively we all did our jobs in our uh, uh, Our jobs in, in by you know in the logarithm the topic and uh, you know, I think after this um, after the, after watching our project you would all have a much much clearer idea of what logarithms are uh, they may seem complex, but you know, uh, they are not that complex after, you know, after you see our project, it will be much easier. History of uh, logarithms. So logarithms were uh, first invented independently by uh, John Napier. He was a, he was a Scottish, he was from, Sc he was a Scotsman. And by Just Berge, he was from Switzerland. Um, they invented different versions of logarithms, uh, not the ones we know right now, um, not the natural ones that we are using right now, uh, but they both created it to, uh, to you know, simplify mathematical calculations. Uh, Napier's version was uh, published in 1614 and Berge's logarithm were uh, published in 1620. Uh, Napier, Napier's approach was more algebraic, uh, was, uh, you could solve it algebraically, but Berge's approach was uh, geometric. But neither of the men had a logarithmic base. Uh, Napier defined logarithm as a ratio of two distances in a geometric form, um, as opposed to the current definition of, of logarithm as exponents. Uh, the possibility of defining uh, logarithm as exponents was later recognized by John Wallis in, uh, in 1685 and by, and by Johann Bernoulli in uh, 1694. The invention of the common system of logarithm is due to the combined effort of Napier and Henry Briggs in 1624. So the natural uh, logarithm first uh, arose um, more or less accident, was a more of accident, accidental variation of Napier's original logarithms. So their real sig significance was not realized until much later. Uh, so the earliest, um, the earliest natural uh, logarithms, they first occurred in 1618. Uh, logarithms are useful in, in, in many fields. You, you can go to from business side, you can use this in finance. Um, you, can also, uh, uh, you can also use this in, in science, in astronomy. Uh, um, you can use this in uh, many fields are integrated with because it simplifies a lot of the calculation that you have to go through um, uh, in, in order to uh, get to a solution. So this uh, logarithm, they simp it simplifies a lot of things. What is a logarithm? Logarithm means it is inverse of taking exponent of something. The logarithm is to find what x is if we have exponent y equal a power of x, a is the base and x is the exponent. For example, 8 equal 2 power 3. How we write this in log form? First look at the base is equal to, we are doing the logarithm of 8 we use the log base 2 of it, we can get the answer is 3. Usually, log x means the base of 10 logarithm. It also can written as log 10x means 10 power of something. Conversion between exponential and logarithm that the formula is important to change from the exponential function to logarithm function and opposite. This is the property of logarithm and the derivative of the property. That is important and you must learn to understand to get idea how to solve the logarithm equations. Convert from exponential to logarithm. 
six of x is thirty six. Finding the logarithm of thirty six, we use log of six of thirty six is equal to x. X power of three equals one hundred twenty six. To find the logarithm of one hundred twenty six. We use log x 126 which is equal to 3. Convert from logarithm to exponential. Log 12 of 144 is equal to. We know that the base is 12 and the answer is 144. So the exponent here is equal to 2. Log 2 of 8 power 4 equal 12. So as shown in the property we use power rule. Put 4 in front of log. 2 8 is equal 4 multiplied by 3 so we get the answer is 12. Here are some use of logarithm in real life such as calculating salt, earthquake and the pH balance in chemistry. We can see from the graph that how rich the skin is determined and how pH is calculated from ions. Now let's look at some real life example. We can see pH value. pH is an abbreviation for power of hydrogen. The pH scale measures how acidic or basic a substance is. It ranges from 0 to 14. The pH of water is 7, which is neutral. A pH less than 7 is acidic and greater than 7 is basic. The acidity depends on the hydrogen ion concentration in the liquid, written as H+. The greater the hydrogen ion concentration, the more acidic is the solution. It's defined as pH equal minus log 10 to H+. To calculate the pH of an aqueous solution, you need to know concentration of the hydromonium ion in mol per liter, the molarity. The pH is then calculated using a log expression, which is pH equal minus log H3O plus. For example, if we want to find the pH of 0.0025 M of hydrogen chloride solution, the hydrogen chloride HCl is a strong acid and is 100% ionized in water. The hydronium ion concentration is 0.0025 M. Thus, the formula will be pH equal minus log to multiplied by 0.0025, which will be equal to 2.6. Now, let's try calculating pOH. To calculate the pOH of a solution, you need to know the concentration of hydro hydroxide ions in moles per liters, the molarity. The pOH is then calculated using the expression pOH equal minus log times OH minus, which O being oxygen and H being hydrogen. For example, what's the pOH of a solution that has a hydro hydroxide ion concentration of 4.82 times 10 to the power of negative 5 M? To calculate this, we will simply use pOH equals minus log or negative log times 4.82 times 10 to the power of negative 5 which will be equal to 4.32. Thank you for being with us till this moment. I was responsible for editing and producing a complete video for my project. With the help of application called Vegas Pro, I could produce a good sound quality and a good videography for the math project. I used more than 50 cuts and merged the clip for completing the video. This was the first online project which we did every process online. It was challenging. At the same time, I could put my editing skill into action. This project not only helped us to gain knowledge but also have fun and enjoy making projects together. Here is my reflection on the project. My experience at first was to learn how logarithmic function works and how they can apply in real life. I found them quite hard and challenging at first because they did not make sense. It was just like a game which you plug in numbers and calculate some random stuff. But at the end of the presentation and making the project, I finally understood how logarithmic functions work and they made complete sense to me. On my work. Uh, so what I learned uh, through my research was uh, I learned a complete history of logarithms, which you know I never knew. Um, and how and why they were made. Uh, so this is, this is the two things that I learned. And I also learned uh, a couple of uh, mathematicians who had their hand in uh, creating the logarithms that we know right now, the exponential form of it. Uh, one of the main guy, one of the main uh, person who uh, created it, came up with the idea of logarithms was John Napier. Um, 
also I also learned about a couple of other mathematicians you know who helped evolve logarithm to what it is right now uh, so this is what I learned in my research what some some difficulty that I faced was uh, trying to sum up these ideas of these all different dates and different mathematicians and just try to make sense of it uh, so this was one of the small difficulties that I had to face but everything else was uh, was smooth after doing the research project on logarithm I have learned many new things that apply in our daily life we didn't know about it before like the pH in the chemistry the difficulty of logarithm is when you solving complicated logarithm to x potential that you might not know what rule you could apply to solve it was a great moment editing and producing a complete video for math project this gave me a responsibility to make a unique video to represent our project and group member Thank you, boys, for this project. Now I want to ask uh, one more reflection from the leader of the group, Ajit. Yes, uh, our project for math exhibition was about logarithms. Wait, fix this. Can you close your mic? Our project for math exhibition was about logarithms. Um, this was uh, one of this, we chose this topic because uh, we found it very interesting in chemistry because we were using this to find the pH scale. Um, you know, we couldn't really solve it, so we decided to choose this topic. Uh, since we already had a real life application, um, it, was, uh, it was easier for us to uh, connect it with the chemistry class also. Um, so, one of the other real life uses could be a Richter magnitude scale, which is used to measure the. Those are ones. Which is used to measure the magnitude of earthquake. Um, so there were some difficulties that we all faced collectively as a team. It was the main, one of our main difficulty was trying to organize a video. It was very hard because we were all in our homes, you know, we wanted to organize one video where we could edit it out and all of us could uh, do our parts, you know, to edit it, the whole thing and compile it together. This was one of the biggest uh, problems that we had to face and also we had to maintain social distancing. Uh, but we overcame this, we did virtual meetings, we uh, decided, we divided our work, everyone had their own part. And uh, I'm grateful to my team, they all did their own parts and effectively. One other issue I think is uh, the sound of the videos, most of these uh, videos faced. Uh, I hope that we can uh, maybe in the future uh, improve on this. Um, was one difficulty, uh, as when you were editing it, it was all good, but I don't understand. You know, it's a bit bad here in this case. Um, we can still uh, improve a lot from this project, uh, improve from our explanation, improve on improve on our ideas, and we can, we can improve a lot in uh, simplifying our explanations to help everyone understand this. Uh, after, I just want to thank Mr. Omran and the math department for making this happen in such difficult times. Uh, I know it's very hard, you know, to have a virtual exhibition uh, but I think they did a very good job and of course they can improve even more the next year if uh, we still had this uh, social distancing and virtual uh, and we still, if your corona was still the same uh, they can of course improve also and we also can improve in our future for university for all of us we can improve on our projects uh, we appreciate all the hard work thank you Mr. Roman the math department uh, all the best everyone thank you thank you Najib and the whole group uh, I want to ask Okay, Dr. Nigat, go ahead. Sorry. Thank you very much, Mr. Amran. Thank you very much, Grade 12 students. Um, I can see Mr. Balik here. And uh, Mr. Balik, would you like to share some reflection about the student's project? Yes, definitely, Dr. Nikhat. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon, Mr. Amran. First of all, I would like to thank you guys for uh, giving me the chance to attend uh, this nice exhibition. 
I, I almost attended from the beginning of uh, uh, the uh, meeting. I saw, mashallah, different projects, and uh, it raised a question in my mind. Who's going to be a doctor then? If you are deeply involved in mathematics and uh, logarithms, and you explained in detail the, the, the concept that you, you've worked on, it seems for me that you're going to be all engineers. You left nothing for any other uh, jobs, actually. Uh, good job, guys. Uh, you did a very, very good job. You went uh, far beyond my expectation. I expected that you're going to show some graphics and you will uh, show some materials and that's it. No, you went deeply in details. Uh, that means you trained a lot, you worked a lot, you got some support and guidance from your teacher, which is a good thing uh, for Mr. Ramran to do. Really, I appreciate having the chance to attend the exhibition with you guys. Good job. Uh, keep up, guys. Thank you, Dr. Nikhat. Most welcome, Mr. Balik, and uh, thank you very much for all your words. And uh, yes, uh, of course, mathematics involved in the engineering field in business. And now these days, some universities, they are asking mathematics for uh, medicine also. So students, I'm sure you know about all these things. Uh, we have Ms. Uh, Saliha. Ms. Saliha, are you here? Uh, Dr. Vahida, would you like to share some feedback? Yes, oh, yes, of course, Dr. Nikhat. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. I was uh, from morning, I was amazed by their uh, exhibition and the presentation. Being a science head, I'm so happy to see the correlation uh, between you know mathematics and physics, mathematics and chemistry. They mentioned in many of the field, and Mr. Balig, he doubted you know all of them will be future engineers. <laughs> that is true. Even Ahmad Hassan, he mentioned his, I think Ahmad Hassan only. They referred to the teamwork, everything was so amazing. They enjoyed the project and uh, they felt the teamwork can make all their difficulties, like they can forget and the dream come true with their effort. Okay, so a lot of soft skills they understood through this project. That is very clear. And the independent work, all those things. Okay, so even uh, Najib, he mentioned a bit about the chemistry. So that's why the math, how it is contributing, you are learning in physics and chemistry. Thank you so much, uh, boys. And I'm looking forward for science exhibition. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Omran. This is your effort. Great uh, job. Thank you, boys. Good luck. Thank, thank you, Mr. Thank you very much, Dr. Wahida, for your feedback. And uh, of course, uh, we can see future engineers. And uh, a student, they already said in their reflection, they learn a lot through this journey. They improve a lot of its skills. And this is just grade 12. So once they will be in university, of course, uh, these skills will help them to improve further uh, and uh, to be the best fit in any professional field either this is engineering, medicine, business, or any other field. So thank you very much, Mr. Omran, for your motivation, for your support to all the students and all the students, grade 12. Good luck for you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Victor. Thank you. Thank you very much. So boys, we can leave right now. Thank you. Thank you very much for all the work you did. See you, inshallah, in the classes now. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. 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 Th